Hello YouTube, this is Bowtie Media, and we've got the final, final, final installment of 2022 in review. This will be my top 50 albums of 2022. Uh, I have a more well-produced video that is just in the top 10 and just EDM focused, uh, and that's another video that you can check that out in the link somewhere here, link down below. But if you want a more well-produced, kind of more thought out uh, thing, I would say, I can go check that here. This is my full list for the year, my full everything. Uh, and there'll be some surprises, some things I didn't think technically fell under EDM in the top category. So I think uh, I think there'll be some things that surprise you. But uh, before we get into the top 50, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put up a list of all the other albums I've listened to in order uh, of my least favorite to favorite. Um, and so here's the list of all of the albums I listened to this year that I thought didn't quite make top 50. And we're back, so we're gonna jump into things pretty much right away. All these, even even at number 50, are albums that I, I did enjoy to some extent. Uh, stuff that I thought was definitely better than average, I would say, <laughs> better than average. So uh, let's hop into it uh, with Subtronics. Fractals is 50, uh, with 49 must says, or must say, must dies, Feral Fantasy. Um, two kind of albums that are a little bit more out there, a little bit more explosive in the EDM world that uh, just not my flavor, but I still still enjoyed. So uh, 48 is Taylor Swift's Midnight's. Uh, 47 is Mr. Fijiwiji's Music Musician Again, which came out December 31st of 2022. So if you missed that one, uh, go check out Mr. Fijiwiji's new album. Uh, and then we got Big Gigantic with Brighter Future 2 at 46. Uh, 45 is Martin Garrick's Sentio. I think I'm Sentio. Sencio? I'm not sure I said that exactly, but uh, 44 is Party Favors Reset album, with 43 being Crystal Skies, Not Since When. Uh, 42, sadly landing a little uh, lower in the list than I would have expected it to or liked it to, but we've got uh, IO and Lights' Warehouse Summer. 41 is Infected Mushrooms, I Am 25, their 25th quarter of a century uh, album, which is crazy. Uh, and then we got 40 with uh, Cruella, The Body Never Lies. Uh, 39 is Graphics Half-Life, a drum and bass album that's pretty great. Uh, 38 is What's So Not's Anomaly, a lot going on. Not a very cohesive project, but some great songs on that thing for sure. Uh, 37 is Bonobo's Fragments, a very kind of ambient, uh, made for critic uh, house EP or LP there. Uh, 36 is uh, Logic's Vinyl Days, actually. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Logic, so Logic's up here. Uh, with 35 being AK's Imperfections from, I believe, Bitbird was where this one was on. Uh, 34 is Totally Enormous Extinct Dinosaurs with When the Lights Go. Uh, lands on 34. Uh, 33 is Reaper's Disruptor LP. Uh, 32, if you love kind of really more experimental out there Porter Robinson, you will love Alexander Panos's Nansent. Nascent? Nascent? Something like that. Uh, you'll, you'll love that if you love a kind of glitchy, more experimental border. Uh, 31, we've got Slumberjack's Dichotomy, their debut LP. Uh, 30 is Jonathan Ogden's Future Forever, a more Christian, kind of a Christian pop-centric LP. Uh, 29 is Oliver Sims' Hideous Bastard, uh, with 38 or 28 being Seven Lines' is Beyond the Veil. Uh, 27 being the weird, almost techno uh, LP in Lewis the Child's Black Marble. Kind of came out of nowhere, especially after a very uh, electro-pop-centric first debut album. Uh, 26 is Fred Again's Actual Life 3, uh, the technically January 1 to September 9, 2022. But uh, that's that's Fred Again did a lot for the world, but the album in the end was, uh, it, it was solid. Just didn't really make it up my list too far. At 25, we got Eptic, The End of the World. I actually really enjoyed that one. I found it being a guilty pleasure for sure for me. Someone that doesn't necessarily like that kind of music a ton. I, I was a big fan. Uh, 24, we've got Swarty's Compact Objects. I'm excited to see what Swarty's going to do in the future. This was great. I really had two like single style songs that I would really ever go back to, but the rest of it is kind of a more of a concept album, I would say. But uh, I would definitely go listen to Swarty for sure. Uh, 23, we've got Vancouver Sleep Clinics with uh, Fallen Paradise. I'm a big fan of Vancouver Sleep Clinic with their kind of dream pop aesthetic. 
And then 22, we've got more Kismet's Universe LP. Uh, 21 is Tritonal's Coalesce, which also both these made my honorable mentions in my big EDM video. And then one I technically didn't categorize as EDM, but would have been in the uh, in the honorable mentions is The Weeknd's Dawn FM. I uh, didn't like it as much as his last album before this, but uh, still a solid project that came out early 2022. And then 19, we got Manila Killer's Dusk, which did make the honorable mentions. Same with 18's being Noisia's Closer, uh, their final album, their drum and bass album. Uh, way to go, Noisia. Uh, 17 is a Cloudy Skies, What Do You Want? And if you are a keen viewer at this point, you'll know that this is 17, but this was my number 10 EDM album of the year. So there are, what, six or seven um, projects that are not EDM that are in the top 10. So I told you there's gonna be some different, the different ones here. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I enjoyed that was, wasn't was quite landed in that uh, nice umbrella of EDM. At 16, we've got Joji Smithereens. Uh, kind of an odd project that's split into two discs and it's pretty quick already. That all things being said, it's like what, five and four tracks or something like that. But uh, oh man, some of the singles on that thing were just gold. Um, so it had to be up this high. Uh, and then 15, we've got Eden, I-C-Y-M-I, uh, made it up here on the list, sadly not in my top 10, and I don't think technically either EDM, really, but uh, I do think this is Eden's weakest album to date, personally, I'm still a big fan, though, so uh, way to go, Eden, with I-C-Y-M-I. Uh, 14, we've got Odessa's The Last Goodbye, a more change to a more house style of record, and so I uh, was a big fan of that. Uh, moving into 13 is Sam Gallatry, speaking of House, via Volume 2, the mixtape. Technically, it's a mixtape, not really an album, but I'm counting mixtapes in this list of albums. So, because the mixtape list would just be this one, because it's the only mixtape I really listened to this year. Uh, but uh, at 12, we've got Swedish House Mafia's Paradise again. Uh, very much a guilty pleasure one for me here uh, from Swedish House Mafia, for sure. And then 11, also speaking of guilty pleasures, we've got Flume's Palaces. Flume's Palaces at number 11. Um, yeah, just solid. You, you kind of know my opinions at this point. And uh, heading into the top 10, we've got number 10 is Beyonce's Renaissance. Definitely an EDM style album with lots of house, more house than some other house records on here. Uh, but uh, Beyonce taking the kind of dive deep into an actual EDM style record and uh, was marvelous. Number nine, we've got Just a Gent's Planet Oasis. Just a Gent, great innovator in music and just always has that interesting sound design that I love hearing. Been a Just a Gent fan for a long time, so that is that. Uh, number eight, Jaren. Uh, it's hard to see color when it's when you're so impossibly far away with the longest album title really ever, um, other than I guess Fred Again's there, but uh, great kind of Indietronica, glitchy, art pop, dream pop, um, synth pop style of, of, of album record that uh, was a great debut one too. So loved, loved, loved that one. Uh, number seven, Kai Wiston's Quiet as Kept, uh, F-O-G, or Fog. Uh, one that I don't think really fell into the EDM category, but very, very experimental. It's not one I think I, or not one I know I haven't really gone back to a ton and listened to, other than Carrier Signal, um, but just a great experiential uh, record that um, uh, just did a, a great job of being really out there and providing some new sounds, new noise to the musical landscape, um, but not as replayable. For sure. Uh, number six is Denzel Curry's uh, Melt My Eyes, See Your Future. Absolutely love Denzel Curry this year. There's always rap stuff that ends in my top albums of the year. I don't know why I just, I listen to most of the rap stuff, but that was one that just hits me in another way that I love and makes it way higher than most of the EDM stuff that I actually really listen to it again and again. And Denzel Curry was, was that for me this year for sure. At number five, we've got A Man Who's Unfold, the debut LP from the prodigy that I know will be changing the EDM landscape for years to come uh, with a wonderful DNB LP here. So, at number four, we've got Grab It's Time Isn't Real. And some of you were saying, whoa, Bowtie. Time Isn't Real was your number one EDM album here, and it's number four on my actual list. So, there are three albums above it that I wouldn't technically say fall under that umbrella EDM category. And so, uh, yeah, so this goes to show that some of those videos, even though they're super well produced and stuff, isn't actually, it's not my specific favorite album of the year. That's why I categorize them as EDM album. So uh, heading into number three, we've got Kendrick Lamar, Mr. Morale, and the Big Steppers. Uh, Kendrick is just always incredible. There's there's no way to really stop that man from producing a fantastic record. Um, and this two disc, two part LP is 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 in incredible. Is absolutely incredible. The singles that keeps me out with music videos for they're just oh 
ah, this thing's great. This thing's great. And really dives into his uh, moral dilemma of trying to not be the scapegoat for the industry of just being like looking to him for all like to be the savior, I guess, of sorts. There's a very much of a a savior complex he's trying to get around. And uh, this album perfectly talks about that and struggle with that. So uh, number two, Crywolf, uh, Exuvium. I'm not actually sure to say this. I think it's Exuvium Oblivion part two. Um, sad fact, I guess, which I may be a, a real pretender here, but I actually haven't listened to Oblivion part one, uh, but I loved Oblivion part two. This thing is a little more experimental, a little more out there, uh, very glitchy sounds with, uh, grand tracks. So many of this out, so much of this track list is just really grand, low building, and then just wall of sound in your face um cry wolf i've known for years but didn't realize these albums were were out but oh my gosh i listened to this later on in the air and i freaking love this thing uh cry wolf killed it on this album and my number one album of the year is quadecas i didn't mean to haunt you another one i listened to later on in the year well it actually came out later on in the year but uh yeah oh man this thing is so quadeca was formerly like a kind of like a soundcloud youtube rapper and came out with a, a couple mixtapes and then a, a kind of a very rap album but it wasn't as well received but this is a more i don't know indie folk like it's a weird kind of electro uh, like not even electro it's like i don't even know what to what is it folktronica art pop experimental hip-hop it's just this weird fusion of everything that is it's it's both haunting it's majestic it's magical it is emotional it is uh yeah, it is It is just an absolutely fantastic record. Quadeca killed it, and this one has been on repeat more so than anything else, I think, um, this year. So, way to go, Quadeca, and that's my list. So, I'd love to know what you guys think. What are your top albums of the year? I'd love to hear it in those comments section below. But uh, other than that, I've been Bowtie Media, and I will see you guys in another video.